Americans for Fair Taxation presents the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation, and recorded by Bob Paxton, a volunteer with the Florida Fair Tax Educational Association. And now, this week's Chairman's Report. Hello, I'm Bob Paxton with the AFFT Chairman's Report for Friday, January 6, 2023. Another Unnecessary Burden We often wonder what the D.C. bureaucrats are thinking when they eagerly impose another tax filing burden on Americans. Then you remember this story and begin to understand. How many D.C. bureaucrats does it take to screw in a light bulb? Two. One to assure everyone that everything possible is being done, while the other screws the bulb into the water faucet. The simple answer is that they need jobs, and the more complex the rules are, the easier it is to justify their jobs. And if the rules are complex enough, they could even justify the need for more bureaucrats to be hired. Bowing to the shouts of outrage from Congress and their constituents, the IRS has delayed the implementation of the 1099-K reporting requirement by PayPal and other online payment services until 2023. This was released by Acting IRS Commissioner Doug O'Donnell. The additional time will help reduce confusion during the coming 2023 tax filing season and provide more time for taxpayers to prepare and understand the new reporting requirements, end of quote. Now, while it's delayed until 2023, the IRS actually wants to enforce the rule for transactions in 2023. Sellers of goods and services are required to report their net income after expenses. If they were paid through a service like eBay, Etsy, PayPal, or Venmo, current law requires these providers to send a 1099 to the seller if there were more than 200 transactions and gross payments exceeded $20,000. Well, the bureaucrats have decided that many of the people receiving less than $20,000 and doing fewer than 200 transactions were not reporting their net income and paying the required tax. So, in typical high-handed manner, they decided the only way to catch the admittedly small number of tax cheaters was to subject all of us to these draconian reporting requirements. When this goes into effect, If you receive just one online payment for more than $600, the payment processor will be required to send you a 1099-K for the gross amount of money that you receive. As you can imagine, payment processors like PayPal and Venmo are understandably very concerned that if this is fully implemented, people will just stop using their service to receive payments. PayPal issued the following statement. This new threshold change is only for payments received for goods and services. This does not include things like paying your family or friends back using PayPal for dinner, gifts, shared trips, etc. Both PayPal and Venmo offer a way for customers to tag their peer-to-peer transactions as either personal, friends and family, or goods and services by choosing the appropriate category for each transaction. Users should select goods and services whenever they're sending money to another user to purchase an item like a couch for a local ad listing or concert tickets or paying for a service. Now let's dig into this a little further. Suppose you paid $1,500 for a couch and you later sold it online for $700. Your buyer rightfully checked the goods or services box when sending you the payment. Now, since you received more than $600, you'll get a 1099-K for $700. But wait a minute, that $700 is not net income. You paid $1,500 for the couch, so you actually lost $800 on the deal. Well, in cases like this, you'll have to report the sale on a separate schedule on your income tax return to show that you purchased the couch for $1,500 and sold it for $700 so there was no net gain and therefore no tax due. Then, if you're audited, either in person or by mail, you'll have to show evidence of the price you paid to prove that you had no taxable income. Now, of course, there will be sellers who will ask their buyers to check the personal and family box when they pay for the couch. In that case, they won't get a 1099-K, but they will have committed tax fraud because the money received was indeed payment on the sale of a good. Because of the efficiency of the IRS computers, we can expect that many people who file their tax returns correctly will still get notices demanding an additional $100 or $200 of income tax, even though they don't actually owe it. Unfortunately, 
Many people who don't want the aggravation of trying to convince a computer that they don't owe the money will just go ahead and pay it. If they ask their tax preparer for help, they will find that having their tax preparer dispute the additional assessment will cost several times more than just paying it. So, once again, it's cheaper and easier to just pay money you don't owe than it is to fight the IRS. And don't think for a minute the IRS isn't aware of that. The IRS has a long history of going after people who don't have the resources to fight back. In addition, many people receiving the 1099-K will honestly assume that the money received was indeed taxable income and dutifully pay the tax even if it's not really owed. Now, of course, if they don't add the schedule showing they incurred a loss on the transaction, the IRS computer will likely send them a notice saying they owe additional tax. In conclusion, yes, the Income Tax Code requires that all income be reported on our income tax returns. However, does it make sense if you're selling a used couch or a used jet ski for less than you paid for it to have to file a whole additional schedule on your tax return just for this one item? Well, the bureaucrats believe that we really work for them, and they seek ways to use their superior intellect to ensure that we do what they determine is best for us. That's a big reason why the D.C. bureaucrats so love the present income tax system. They can create forms and rules and make all of us dance to the tunes that they so love to create. And as long as they can control us, they don't really care what kind of problems they create for us. But there is a much fairer, much simpler, and much more efficient way to do it. The fair tax. The fair tax collects the revenue that the federal government needs to operate, but does it in a way that has the least impact on our individual freedom and the least impact on our economic prosperity. With a fair tax, there are no tax returns to file and no records to keep. We pay our federal taxes when we make retail purchases of new goods and services. In that case, there's no need for the IRS. If you sell a used couch or a used jet ski online, there's no fair tax due on that transaction. Now, the D.C. bureaucrats don't want the fair tax passed because much of their reason for being employed disappears. They'll no longer be able to create problems for the rest of us through their complex new tax forms and regulations. The fair tax will allow us to take back control. The income payroll tax system is broken. It's no longer working. We can't repair it, but we can replace it with the fair tax. Join us and take back control of our country and our lives, not with bullets, but with the elimination of one of the biggest threats to our liberty and economic prosperity, the income payroll tax. We should all remember Edmund Burke's warning that applies to our efforts to take back control. Nobody made a greater mistake than he who did nothing because he could only do a little. We should also remember this quote from George Orwell's 1984, which, if we do nothing, may foretell your and your children's future. If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face forever. So what can each of us do? We can write letters and make calls to our elected representatives and attend Zoom town hall meetings demanding that if they really want to allow Americans to take back control, the first step is to eliminate the income payroll tax system and enact the fair tax. Take back control. Help us pass the fair tax. The IRS will be gone and will pay our taxes when we make purchases. We, not the ruling class and their minions in D.C., will decide how much federal tax we pay and we'll know how much tax we're paying because taxes will no longer be hidden from us. They'll be clearly shown on every retail receipt. If you have friends who don't know about the fair tax, send them to fairtax.org. Have them watch the whiteboards under how it works, and if they agree, ask them to please join us. Then, contact your members of Congress and the President and demand that Congress pass the fair tax. The only truly fair tax. <laughs> This has been the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation. Check back every week for news and information about the fair tax and learn why the fair tax should replace our antiquated federal income tax system. If you'd like to receive a copy of the Chairman's Report in your inbox every week, sign up at fairtax.org.